Welcome to Ask Mayor Veenstra here on Addison Community Television. I'm Don Weiss. We're glad to have you along with us for our monthly town hall meeting with the mayor of the village of Addison, Rich Veenstra, who joins me here in the studio for our call in and email in program where you, the residents of Addison, have the opportunity to speak one on one with uh, Mayor Veenstra and can uh, comment on any uh, uh, issue or concern that you would like to bring up during the course of our program. So we're glad to have you along with us. We're also going to call this a bit of a uh, uh, IT tutorial uh, tonight. Uh, you may have uh, heard us recently just begin to talk about the new uh, Addison Connect mobile app which uh, is now available and can be downloaded uh, for free of charge uh, from your uh, app store of whatever device you like to use. And we're going to give you a bit of a tutorial on that uh, during our program today. So if you have your smartphone handy, or even if you have your iPad handy, like I have right here on uh, the desk, we would encourage you maybe to uh, uh, go and get that because uh, you might want to follow along as we uh, begin to uh, meet with our residents now and uh, talk to you about how you can put the new Addison Connect mobile app directly onto uh, your device. It's uh, kind of like an introduction of e-government here. Uh, we all know what e-commerce is. You can uh, you know, shop online, you can bank online, you can even book your vacations online, yeah. but this is an opportunity for the village of Addison, for its uh, government services uh, to be more accessible and more convenient for you as a, a citizen of Addison to uh, reach the village, contact us, uh, uh, particularly in the area of uh, service requests. And uh, the whole idea behind an e-government process is just that, to make uh, uh, our operations a lot easier for the residents of Addison to, uh, to access. So, Mayor Veenster, welcome uh, to the program. Now that I've given my e-government uh, uh, lesson for this evening, this was your idea, I have to say. You had approached the staff Sure, blame and, me for it. And now. talked about <laughs> the uh, Addison Connect mobile app. Before we get into talking exactly about this, what was some of the things that you were hoping that we would be able to accomplish by, by making a mobile app and a service mm -hmm. request system available for residents using uh, a very modern form of technology mm -hmm. as we know it today? Well, you know, I think the role of government is to pro provide services for the residents, and uh, access to those services is critical. And, uh, you know, a lot of what we've been doing for years are, are manual uh, access points, whether it's phones or stopping in or writing a letter. And uh, the technology that we have today is just so far advanced, uh, it just doesn't make sense not to utilize that and to give our residents the opportunity to access all of our departments quickly, easily, and uh, have a turnaround time where they know it's been received, uh, they know the follow-up, and uh, quite frankly, it gives us a way of monitoring our quality and our, our ability to respond to our, our residents. Very good. Well, helping us in the demonstration and the tutorial that we're going to present to, to you. And by the way, later on in the program, if, if you wish, you can contact us uh, through the normal uh, uh, process. You can send an email to askmayorveenstra at addison-il.org or you can call in during the course of the program, uh, and that is 630-693-7500. So we're, we're very happy to, uh, to talk uh, with you and perhaps answer a question. Um, but helping us uh, during our demonstration uh, in the control room this evening, uh, joining Dory Kragi is uh, Addison's new Public Works Director, Mr. Rick Federici, and uh, it's the Public Works Department and Community Development and the Police Department who are all working together on the development and have, have worked together, Mayor, on, on the development of the new uh, mobile app. So, uh, Rick, what we're going to do, and, and Dory, is we're going to kind of simulate uh, a, um, a service request here. I'll, I'll be the resident, and then you <laughs> folks be the village, okay? Right. And we'll show kind of how this works. And um, at, at any time, and uh, Mayor, at any time, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk people through this, and if there's something that we want to add, and then we'll kind of get into some of the internal things, and then uh, Dory will talk about some of the website features in just a moment. So uh, on my iPad here, which we have on the desk, which uh, a little easier for demonstration purposes, but this could also be on, on a uh, iPhone as well, I have put on here the Addison Connect uh, app, which is right up here in the corner, and I'm going to go ahead and, and launch that. And the name of the company that developed this is called City Sourced, which the Village of Addison has has contracted with. We have the uh, the opening page or the home page of Addison Connect, and down here at the bottom it says Create a Request. So once you start to see this, you know you're in the right place and you're good to go. So this is going to be just a simple demonstration. Now you could be out, you know, walking in the park, or you could be out in your neighborhood and see something. We're going to kind of simulate it so it actually would be something that might be happening like right here in our studio for example but you get the idea so I'm gonna go ahead and click on create a request 
And it'll ask me right away if I want to create this with a photo, video, or audio. Uh, or maybe I already have something uh, of a photo or video or to go without it. But we're going to go ahead and send it with a photo. So up on the top of our uh, little uh, selection bars here, we'll go create photo. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And again, create, um, uh, create photo. Okay. Now I have to turn my little camera around there. And right there is Mr. David Baker, who is our camera operator this evening. Hello, Dave. Why don't you wave to the folks at home? OK, so we're going to go ahead and take that photo of uh, uh, Dave at his camera. But we'll pretend that this is actually a, a, an issue that needs to be reported to the village. And we'll say, yes, we want to use that photo. Now, what um, these apps are able to do is by using the GPS tracker that is already part of your your uh, um, online device here, your smartphone or, or your iPad, whatever it is, it knows where you're located at. And that's really important because mm -hmm. sometimes, that's very critical for the, for the village crews to go up, but maybe you don't know what this area is called right. or what the address is. So it's all ready to go, it's all in there. All I need to do is, once we've done that, is, is I'm gonna hit next. It's gonna come up with an address bar, which says One Friendship Plaza, right up there at the top. Uh, address, One Friendship Plaza, Addison, Illinois. So right now, we're, we're in good shape. I need to select what type of report this is. And we have a, a, a predetermined list of uh, service requests, and each one of them is linked to a department within the village. Makes it a little easier and much faster to get the report in. So we're going to go ahead and select a report. And you get choices down here. Just kind of scroll along. Abandoned bicycle, abandoned shopping cart, vehicle, and so on and so on and so on. Uh, we're going to go down here to, how about flooding on property, okay? So we'll go ahead and click that just by pushing done. Okay, then it'll ask you a couple of other questions after that because we're trying to focus in on the exact location here. So what type of flooding on property? Basement, sump pump, or yard? We'll go ahead and say it's yard. Now, I can type in a message to go along with this just so you know we're not only doing this by, well, you have to be able to make a choice here of one uh, selection or one service request to the other. You can still type mm -hmm. in a message. So we're just going to type um, test message because that's all we're really doing here. And it comes up right on your phone. You can type just like you would send a text message. And then once I have filled out all those fields, I'm going to hit submit. Now it will also ask for your name, address, email address, that's so they have contact information. That's already been put into the system here. I have to go back and see if, oh, I did miss one. A yard type, sorry, front yard, we'll say, okay. And if you miss one, like I just did, uh, it'll, it'll alert you to that, hit submit. Now it's sending requests. Now let's go into the control room and we'll talk with Rick Federici while we're waiting for the message to send. He sent. Now Rick, in the past when your crews would be responding to any type of, of service, what would you normally have to do? How would those uh, requests normally come into the Public Works Department? Well, typically they'll come in through telephone call, through emails, and of course then those have to be processed by our staff. Um, they in turn will get loaded into a database where we enter in everyone's information based on the call, what service they need. Then it gets distributed to the different departments. Um, so that can take some time in, in entering that data, tracking down the right people, sending them either an email or a telephone call to have them start the service request. Mm -hmm. And very often, uh, particularly uh, a case like this, there might be more than one person uh, right. in the department that needs to respond. In your department, particularly, you have you know, yourself as the director, you have a superintendent, you have a foreman, and then you have the actual crews. And all those people need to know what's going on. They need to be able to respond appropriately because every call is going to be a little different, right? So this way, everyone gets the message sent at one time, right? Correct. That's, that's correct. And then also to our office staff so that they can also track uh, what's going on. But it goes to the supervisor. And by having the drop-down menus when you've picked a specific problem, it goes right to that specific supervisor and to the supervisor's assistant in case they're not available. Okay. Uh, this way it's pretty seamless and it will get processed um, uh, right away. Now let's take a look back here at the mobile app and then we'll go over and see what's appeared on your screen there. Uh, Rick, now I have a message here which reads, your report has been submitted. Thanks for making Addison a better place. And that's, that's great. So let's check out what's going on in, in your office now, Rick. This message has been sent. Has this appeared on your, your uh, screen that you have there in front of you? Yes, it did show up. I'm already logged into the City Source site, which our, uh, all of our staff have access to. Um, we call this the dashboard, where we can do everything from this site, uh, take a look at the request, 
um, look at the status. We could see the, a map view, as you can see at the top part of my screen also, for the, lo the location, the exact location of the issue. Um, but as that was sent, not only was it appearing on the site, but then those emails were going out to all those critical people, as I mentioned before. Um, all received those emails. And we already have a plan of who takes the lead on, on that request. Um, when I go in here, though, I can then I see the request popped up with the picture. And I can click on the ID, and then that will open up the actual service ticket. Um, you can see there's a just short description of, of the ticket, uh, who it was assigned to in our department. Um, and it's noted right now the current status is that we've received it. And then there's other information about who the, who the, who the person is that submitted the request. Is that me, the resident? Did I submit the request then? Yes, and so you can see there for the author and the device information. Great, yes. okay. So in other words, we're making Addison a better place. You then. are, <laughs> correct. Okay, so what happens so, next when you get that information? So when our lead person then gets this, which in this case is Sean Quinn of our sewer division, um, he will see uh, he'll read the information, look at the ticket. There was a picture here, as you can see, to the right of my screen, uh, the, the picture of Dave that has shown up, and then a little smaller breakout of the exact location, which, of course, we're at Village Hall here, uh, and there's a little icon there. It uh, gives the coordinates, the GPS coordinates, and the address. Um, so immediately then what this person would do is would acknowledge that he's received it, and then uh, we do that by clicking on the status button, and then we can choose if it's in process or we're in route, um, if it's on hold, if we have to refer to another department, which can happen on mm -hmm. occasion, um, or if we could not verify it. But we would mark one of these. So I would, re I would check that it's in process, click update, and at that time it updates the website and in turn sends out messages uh, to both the person who submitted the request and then all those other staff members that I mentioned. Right, so in other words, back over here onto the uh, uh, mobile app for a second. Now that the Public Works Department has actually received that, and uh, as Rick was saying, he's able to then send out a message. The next thing that will appear, and here is my message that I sent uh, with, with my whole description so I can keep track of it too. I'll be able to know when I sent the message uh, and the location, so on. Then there'll be another little message box that'll come up here that'll say, um, you know, your message was received by, by the Village of Addison. So um, with, with that tracking number on there also, does that help? Is it something that, does it make your operations a little easier then by saying uh, what happened to report number, well, let's see, in this case it actually has um, 174329, I mean, is that, is that a good thing for you to have, or do you say, hey, did you fix that flooding problem over on the east side of town? No, this, this is good. Then we can give it, we'll assign that number then within our own system as well. Um, it can be tracked, and we can run some other reports. Um, uh, so we will use that. Um, the, on your device, I believe, when you go back in at a later time, you could always search or recall by that number. Yeah. The message um, just popped up here, Rick, by the way, too. So right there it says the Village of Addison has updated the status of the report number that I just read from received to in process. So this is, Mayor, I think important for you too, that you know that not only did a person actually send this message, but, but there was an acknowledgement that it has been received. Definitely. And it's not just sitting in an yeah. inbox somewhere. And let's just talk about that for a second, Rick. How many people typically in your department will be receiving these messages? You know, here's one message that came in, but it's not just sitting in an email I mean, what if somebody's on vacation and they're out sick for the day? I mean, other people will get this, right? Correct, yes. When that is submitted, it goes, as I mentioned, to the supervisor of that division, and then also the backup or, or the assistant supervisor in that division. Okay. It goes to all five of our clerical staff. It goes then to, the, uh, to myself as a director. It goes to our superintendent, uh, in this case, the superintendent of environmental services. So you can see already there's a group of six or seven people that, that receive this and mm -hmm. know right away, hey, there is a situation uh, that's been submitted that we need to address. Let's talk about emergency situations or middle of the night type of things. Is this a good tool or a good practice to use if something was you know, clearly an emergency or, or what is the best thing for a resident to do in that case? For this, this is kind of more for your run of the mill things that you see as you're out, maybe not your very serious. Now we do have some on, if you, if you click down and you were showing some of the selections that were there, for example, water main break. If there is a significant, obviously, we'd rather than that you would call the non-emergency police number. 
um, which is what the normal course of what people would do now. Um, because this is sent as an email, it might just be a, a soft chime or something at three in the morning, and if it's an emergency, yeah. we may not hear it and our staff may not hear it. Right. Um, so then we would prefer, uh, absolutely, that you go through the, for off hours, it's the non-emergency police number. Yeah, and it's not meant to replace any type of emergency contact to the village or any other agency for that matter. It, it's no, not for any kind of 911, certainly of those right. types of calls. But you'll see things like flooding are in there. Those, um, and again, during the day, it's no problem to submit it through this process because all of us are here working. Um, it's just those ones that are between you know midnight and six that to be sure that we, uh, if it is an emergency, we need to know that you take those other paths. Dory, why don't you tell us now about how uh, this uh, uh, Addison Connect uh, function, the app, is also accessible on the village's website too, which I guess would kind of make sense because we drive people to the website, we tell them to go there for information, but also they can then use that as a, as a way to communicate back to the village as well using this technology. Absolutely. Right on the home page of addisonadvantage.org, if you scroll down a little bit, we have Get Connected with the Addison Connect mobile app. Um, we have links right now so that people can download the app but also if they don't have a smartphone or they're just more comfortable the computer rather than those little um, keyboards, they can actually submit a report online. So you see over here on the, the right, it gives you some instructions about how easy it is to fill out the report. But the first thing is that they would type in the address of wherever this, this is and then they're going through the identical process that you just showed us. So uh, once they enter the address, it pinpoints it on the map, and then they'll have those same menus where they can choose flooding or um, you know, garbage or whatever, same sub-menus, and then they would enter their contact information so that somebody can get back to them. Um, I should mention this, this is a great tool, but uh, probably not as specific if you have the ability to submit this right from where you are mm -hmm. when you see the item. Because as Rick mentioned, um, it's utilizing the GPS in your phone. So if you have the ability to snap the photo and when you're right there, that's probably the best way to do it. So we would encourage you to put the app on your smartphone. Right now it's available if you have an iPhone or an Android device. Eventually it'll be available for all smartphones. Um, you can go to your App Store or Google Play right on your phone. Or if you're more comfortable, we have links here on the website to take you directly to the app in the App Store, directly to the app in Google Play, and then you would download it onto your computer and just sync your device and it'll show up. Well, Rick and Dory, thank you very much uh, for the look inside here. And um, again, it's the Addison Connect mobile app. Mayor, I think uh, in just the last several months that we've been researching this, working with the departments, th this is really meant to use new technology with the ability of residents to communicate to the village just as we would be able to send out information to them as yeah, well. Yeah, I think the distinction between Code Red where we're notifying the residents of something going on, this allows the residents to notify us. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I think one of the things that is important is that we've got 200 employees, 250 employees total in our village uh, government. Uh, that's 500 eyes that get to see what's going on in town. We've got 37,000 residents. That's a lot more visibility on issues that can be identified and we could address. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're basically soliciting input from our residents to identify issues that uh, are problematic and, and need addressing. And does this make service delivery better? Uh, you know, Rick was talking about how it was done previous to this mm -hmm. and, you know, emails and phone messages and those are all still obviously valid, but uh, does this kind of transform the way that, yeah, maybe we're operating in a different mindset now, we're using technology to make our service delivery better for the community? Yeah, there's no question. When you have the electronic data transfer, it's more, much more efficient and there's the feedback that we can get so we know that things have been happening correctly and uh, being addressed. All right. Well, it's the Addison Connect mobile app and we encourage you. It's available now uh, through uh, your app store. As Dory mentioned, it's accessible off of the Village of Addison website, addisonadvantage.org, or you can just load it directly onto uh, your, your your smartphone device here, your iPad, whatever you're, you're comfortable with. And we encourage you to take a look at it, really, and just kind of get used to it uh, so you're ready to go. So we want to thank uh, uh, Rick Federici from the uh, Village of Addison Public Works Department and Dory for giving us uh, the kind of background on it. Thanks uh, very much. Uh, 
to both of you folks. We have a couple minutes remaining, Mayor, before we uh, uh, say goodbye for the week. Let's talk a little bit about Rock and Wheels. We're uh, well past halfway uh, through the summer right now. How has the summer been going for you? I've seen you out uh, enjoying the, the music yeah. and the cars and the bikes and the weather's trying to cooperate as well. So how have our weekly events been going here? In They've Ask? progressively gotten bigger and better. Uh, you know, now that we've dried out, yeah, right. uh, it's uh, <laughs> night and day. Uh, like I said, er every event seems to be a little bit bigger. We had arguably close to 2,000 people last Thursday night for a great performance and right. a lot of good food. Uh, and we've got some great acts lined up for the rest of the year. So yep. we're encouraging everybody to get out there and uh, enjoy the fun and the food. In fact, on that note, our events for this week, uh, of course, tomorrow, which is Tuesday, August 4th, is the uh, 14th annual, 14th annual already, uh, Addison by the Slice Pizza Bake Off. It's a good thing to, to know that it doesn't show that we've been uh, doing this event for 14 years, but it's also National Night Out, which is a very cool. important evening for uh, everybody, really, uh, kind of led by the Addison Police Department to get out and um, observe uh, the National Night Out against crime. And so our Addison by the Slice Pizza Bake Off will be uh, Tuesday, August 4th, begins at 6 o'clock. Come on out and vote for your favorite pizza restaurant among four great Addison pizza restaurant tours. The music uh, for Tuesday night will be by the group Frayed Not, starting at 7.30 and including some uh, 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 Addison Trail alumni in there uh, as well. And then we uh, uh, switch it around in just a couple of days for Thursday and it's Rockin' Wheels time once again for our taco night and the music is by Fuse, which is a Latin rhythm rock group. And then we go into uh, uh, Blues Mavericks the following week on August 13th. Uh, we have Think Floyd USA, which is making their debut appearance here in uh, Addison. And they'll be a great group. I saw them last year in Naperville and they'll, they'll be terrific here in Addison. Uh, August 27th is Chef's Special Night with War Pigs, which is a Black Sabbath uh, tribute group. And then we uh, end the season in September with a, a return engagement by Deacon Blues, the Steely Dan tribute group. Look at that crowd, Mayor, will you? There yeah. is your Village Green <laughs> with, as you said, about 2,000 people in it. And we're actually going to be doing some improvement work, some infrastructure work, once all those people are gone. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, right, to help with the drainage in there. And I understand there may be fireworks tomorrow night. Oh, and that's right. Thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yes, and fireworks as well. So. For everyone who's been involved, and that includes uh, Rick and the Public Works Department, police, building and grounds, fire, um, uh, the Historical Commission and Society, special events, your village board, and, and everyone here in community relations. Thanks for, for uh, making our uh, summer as successful as it is. And we have a, a few weeks left to go, and we hope you can come out and join us. Check uh, ItHappensInAddison.com for more information on our upcoming uh, our lineup for the remainder of the year. Well, we've come to the end of our program. We want to thank uh, Rick Federici and Dory Kragi for giving us the tutorial on the Addison Connect mobile app. And uh, please check that out. And it's there and accessible for when you need it. And you can go ahead uh, and start using that now. And uh, if you have a service request to submit to the Village of Addison, in the interest of our being able to serve you better, please take advantage of that uh, and send your request in. And thanks to Mayor Beanster for being with us as Thank well. Thank you, Dan. Hope to see you this week at Addison by the Slice on Tuesday, August 4th or Thursday for our Rockin' Wheels concert and the music by Fuse and uh, uh, the car show with the Best in Show trophy sponsored by Hot Rod House. Thank you very much for joining us. Stay tuned for coverage of this week's Village Meetings, and we will see you out on the Village Green Tuesday and again Thursday for Rockin' Wheels. I'm Don Weiss. Thank you for joining us.